previously on the Lupa Fuentes experience. Then I think a lot of people in America and elsewhere in the world learn the hard way, right? Like the justice system isn't actually set up to protect everyone, right? It's just a few people. And the law in the United States really enables wealthy abusers to come after their victims to silence them. Welcome to the Lupe Fuentes Experience. Today I'm going to be interviewing an amazing artist named Theo Crocker. He's a jazz musician, a producer, and he just dropped an album named Black to Life, A Future Past. Let's get to it. I cannot wait to talk to him. Hey, Theo. Welcome to the Lupe Fuentes Experience. I'm doing great. I'm so happy to have you here. We have so much to talk about. And to start with, I want to hear a little bit about you and just a little intro about what you're doing, who you are, and yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for having me on, on your on your show. It's an honor to be here. My name is Theo Croker, and I'm a musician, composer, producer, uh, trumpet player. Sometimes I sing um, with the right in, encouragement. And um, <laughs> I've been playing music for almost 25 years. Um, and uh, that's me. I travel all over the world doing that, most of it in normal times. <laughs> That's so cool and so interesting. The fact that you play the trumpet is like such a cool instrument. Why did you chose the trumpet? Well, you know, I was, I was, I signed up for the trumpet when I was maybe 11 in school and I was very much attracted to like the timbre of the sound and, um, you know, how much, how much sound it could make and what it could do and all the, how it had no limitations with range and everything. Um, and I grew up listening to the trumpet because my grandfather was a Grammy Award winning trumpet player. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. So it's in your blood. People say that. I haven't, I haven't discovered the music gene yet, but yeah, I believe it's in my blood. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is a really curiosity for me because I love music and I'm a producer as well. And oh, cool. I didn't actually, when I was little, I didn't have the opportunity to be exposed to music in that way. So I, I'm always curious when when you grow up around music and when your family are musicians, um, in terms of keys and tones, do you do you you are you are born with that like ability to differentiate keys right away? I want to know. <laughs> um, you know, I I it's hard, it's hard to say if I was born with that or not, because uh, I remember always being musical. I remember going to like see a movie when I was a child and remembering the musical score and singing it on the way home. That doesn't mean anybody else in the car understood what I was singing, but in my head, I was singing the music from the movie. And But, I, you know, I spent years, decades studying music like intensely on my own and through school. So I think th it's hard for me to remember how much I knew or didn't know. I just, yeah. I think I always understood music as a style and as an expression and I always, you know, wanted to interact with it. And then I just had some very patient educators that made me learn the theoretical part of it. Uh, so but how I always, you, you know, I just was drawn to it without knowing what it was I was into. It. So having a dad that was a Grammy winner musician, um, <laughs> when you started playing the trumpet, how how old were you? I was eleven years old. Oh, I wow. was eleven years old, and and it, it was actually my grandfather, and and because, you know, because you know, I signed up for for jumping to school and I came home and I told my parents and they, they, they seemed a little concerned. They were like, you know, just because your grandfather played the trumpet doesn't mean you have to do it. And I was like, no, I, I want to play trumpet. <laughs> so, you know, it was cool. I remember traveling around as a young child and, and a teenager and seeing my grandfather perform in different places. And always, he was very old. He was in his nineties and still wow. performing. So, you know, I would see him perform as his 90 year old man or 92, actually, and just be amazed that he could even play the trumpet. 
Will Will you say that your grandfather is your role role model in terms of music? Uh yeah, I could say he's one of my role models. Yeah, That's the fact cool. that he had a career that was seventy years long wow. is pretty amazing. That is impressive. <laughs> yeah, it's quite the fact that at ninety years old, after that super long journey, you can still play is is such a beautiful skill that can never go away, not even with age. Yeah, the I opposite, mean, I, quite the opposite. You can just just get better and better, right? That's what they say. I mean, I'm 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 trying to understand how a 90 year old man played the trumpet that well. <laughs> <laughs> the trumpet is not an easy, not an easy or forgiving instrument, anyway. So, how much practice did it talk for you to get? to get as good as you are right now, because you're the total master of your craft. So when do you think you hit those 10,000 hours? <laughs> well, I mean, I think there's been, there were a couple thresholds where I hit those 10,000 hours. And I think uh, with the trumpet, you have to keep hitting them. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like, like being an athlete. Like right now, I feel like I've had two off seasons. So when I go to perform, it's very, my endurance and it's very you know because of because of the lockdowns and everything i feel mm -hmm. very like woof, out of shape um and the only way to get back in shape is to have a whole season really mm -hmm. of touring and everything but i think i spend hours a day you know now i can spend four or five six hours a day practicing if i have the time mm -hmm. and i did that for many years but something that was essential in my career that what i would consider the ten thousand hours is i went to Shanghai, China, um, mm -hmm. and I performed in a club for six months for three shows a night, six nights a week. Wow. So after that, I had done my 10,000 hours. <laughs> and for How many years, I continued different contracts like that where I would perform like crazy. I did I, thousands of shows. during And 10,000 hours, not only practicing, but actually performing in front of crowds. Right. So it was the performing in front of the crowds that gave me my 10,000 hours of like, okay, like Amazing. I can show up to your house right now and perform if I had to, even if I haven't played or haven't slept or eaten or any of those things because wow. of those 10,000 hours. <laughs> you know, that was actually one of my next questions. And one of the things I thought about when I saw that your tour schedule was so full, you're constantly touring. You must love performing. You're constantly touring. <laughs> What do you do on tour to to stay healthy, to keep a healthy mental state and body? That's a very good question. Um, on the road, there's a couple of things I do. I, I eat. I'm, I'm a very healthy eater in general. Uh, I eat a lot of fruit and a lot of vegetables and not a lot of animal. I don't really eat any, any animal products. Are you vegan all. currently? I am a vegan. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Um, I'm on the edge of fruititarianism, if that's even a thing. Oh, but, wow. Uh, like I could eat 10, 10 papayas a day like and be happy. But <laughs> I but love papayas. I'm, yeah, okay. We have to have a papaya party. Um, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I drink a lot of water. And uh, I know these things, they don't sound musical, but the, the physical body has to be in such good shape for your to be able to maintain all the rigorous travel and going in and out of a different culture every day. And, and mm -hmm. it's very little sleep. A lot of times, you know, we're performing till midnight or one in the morning and we have to leave at four or five in the morning. That's so, why I um, wanted to ask you this question because I have toured in the past and a lot of people see, you know, the, the glamour and the celebration, but people don't see the struggle and the traveling mm -hmm. and, all of the parts that take to make mm -hmm. a show happen. So, so yeah, I, I, it's, it's so difficult to keep a healthy lifestyle on tour because you're constantly on other people's time and you don't have, yep. so, so yeah, what are some of those things besides eating healthy? Like so interesting that you are such a healthy eater. <laughs> I mean, my green room looks like a garden. Uh, there's, nothing, <laughs> there's, no, there's no dead food in it or dead animals in it. Um, wow. I, I, I do a, I do, I have a good yoga practice that I'll do and breathing exercises that I'll do every day that give me a lot of energy. And sometimes I have to do them multiple times throughout the day, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, especially at the sound checks and things like that. And, um, you know, you just have to keep your mental state. You have to make sure you're feeding your brain every day. Um, mm -hmm. I read a lot of books. 
I know this sounds pretty boring. <laughs> no, I love to get to know you. This is exactly you know this is exactly what the show is about to get fruit, to know the person books. behind the artist. It's it's always a human behind the artist, right? So I want to get exactly. to know that part of you. Mm -hmm. You know, we go. I go for walks every city I get to. I try to make the time to go to walk uh, and to get a lot of air. What type of books do you like to read? Uh, I like to read books on. I'm a very spiritual person, so I like to read books on different spirituality practices and things like that. Um, I like to read books. Oh, here we go with the boring. I like to read historical books. I like really. I think I really like biographies, um, mm -hmm. especially if if it's an autobiography. I feel like I can hear the person's voice in my in my head when I'm reading, you know, their story, and I feel like I'm living their story with them. And I always mm -hmm. feel very inspired by a biography. Give me an example. I love reading books too. I might I might okay. just go and read the next one. You you tell me. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, so my my favorite the, recently one of the, one of the best biographies I read is by Richard Pryor, the comedian. Okay. And cool, um, cool. he's so funny. And I, you know, I've seen, I know his voice and I heard his voice the whole time. And I, I just, you know, I would be on an airplane just laughing really loud. <laughs> <laughs> what about, uh, how do you get prepared for performing? I know you perform a lot and we talk about this and you have a lot of experience in, you know, traveling and performing in different uh, cultures. What do you do before a show to feel good about yourself? So, you know, I try to I try to make sure that I take a moment to get into a room or space by myself alone and 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 have some quiet, like like maybe 10 minutes of quiet. And um, sometimes I even shut the light off and I just breathe and I uh, just try to center myself and get grounded and and be present because all the moving around so much can make you feel very disconnected. Mm -hmm. which can be very freeing because you you know everything is exciting and everything and new all the time but it can also you know it's good to ground right before you go out on the stage so i kind of just breathe and collect all my energy and um and focus it you know for what i'm about to perform and i try to do that right before they they are ready for us to start playing beautiful beautiful <laughs> get in touch with yourself Yes, get grounded. Mm -hmm. What inspired you about jazz that made you start that journey? I think it, I think it was the fact that that every you know that you could hear uh, different musicians play the same song and it'd be completely different. Different. Mm -hmm. And and how how the unique thing about about what the jazz music is that is that it is about your individual approach and voice to it. So it's not about you sounding like other people. It really is about how you create the, how you interpret the music and sound. And, and that every time you perform a song, it's different because there's a lot of improvisation. So the way I play the song tonight, I'll, tomorrow night, I have a chance to play it a different way. And it really depends on a lot of the energy that you get from the audience. So you're really creating a transient experience that that only happens in that moment. Um, and it's unique to that moment and specific to that moment. And then it's gone forever. And you can't uh, you can't uh, like recreate something that's gone. Wow. So that for me was like very I'm super creative and I've always been super creative. And that for me was a way to I found is a way to be is a way to satisfy a lot of my creativity um, in a non-judgmental way because we can be very hard on ourselves as yes. artists. Yes. Um, so it, it's very freeing to just to just know that what I'm doing only exists right now, and um, you know, and it's okay. It's okay to be, you know, whoever I am right in this moment when I'm creating because tomorrow I may may be somebody different. Oh, wow. That's that's such a beautiful way to talk about music. And that comes to mind because music is such a spiritual experience for you and it's so organic when I hear yes. when I hear it. Um, what's your mission with your music? My mission with my music is to is to is to create music that has high vibrations and is very intentional. Mm -hmm. I think I think it's important that, you know, just like a doc, when you go to the doctor, you want a doctor with experience. You want a doctor who who knows how to research and understand the body. 
I think with music, technology has allowed uh, allowed us to be very lazy and and um, just kind of make it accessible for everybody, which I'm which I'm cool with. I support. But I also think it's important that, you know, music is sacred and the vibrations of it are very powerful. And the less you know about the tones and the vibrations that you're dealing with, the the some of the intention gets lost. So it's very mm-hmm. important that we because music it's very important that we continue to make music with intention so that it can be healing and be powerful and uplifting and supportive to people in their everyday life and be more than just entertainment. And I believe it can be both together. Oh, I love that. It's so beautiful. And you know what? Actually, music as a healing tool is so powerful. I've been listening to a lot of, um, a lot of instrumentals lately and a lot more organic music. Uh, like mm. like the, your type of music and a lot of very uh, just music to listen to, not as much music to dance to, but music to listen right. to, and mm-hmm. and it's been such a different experience for me. I always throughout my career I really like to make just like music that make me uh, happy or dance, you know, something very for the dance floor. But now I think. Right. When you grow and change, as what you were saying, you experience different type of sounds in a different way. Um, I love music as a healing tool. That's that's so that's so beautiful. I mean, and music with intention. I feel like, especially nowadays, because it's so much mm-hmm. access to technology and to you yeah. know different programs, etc. Um, the intention is lost a lot of the time in the artistry, mm-hmm. and I love that it you're putting be. that first. You know, the, the intention comes from the energy that you put into it. So like the album I just released, the the Black to Life of Future Past, there was a lot of intention through us in the band. A lot of um, focus and meditation was put on the music when we made the music. And afterwards, a lot of prayer and meditation was put on it. Um, there's even, you ever heard of the binaural beats? No. That you listen to, like the wavelengths that you mm-hmm. listen to for relaxation or mm-hmm. concentration? Yes. There's one of those in every song turned down very low between it. So uh, uh, b- below the music, but it's there. And things like that, I think it's important that we you have to put the intention into the music for people to receive it. And I think, I believe music can still be entertaining and danceable and fun with intention. Mm-hmm. Beautiful, beautiful. Hey, just a friendly reminder. If you like the show, make sure to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Thank you for hanging out with me. So what is your creative process when you, you're you talking to me about intention and creating music with a purpose, you know, of healing and really putting feelings and emotions, creating that? Psilocybin meditation is involved in, in your creation, so I want to know a little bit more yes, about absolutely. that. Okay, well, um, for well, excuse me, specifically for <laughs> this project, um, you know, it, it this project came. You know, I wait for the music to come to me. You know, I wait for the higher powers of existence to send me the inspiration, and then when I receive the inspiration, I'm just simply trying to decode it and formulate it in a way that I can share with people. Um, so. This album came to me after many weeks of meditations with psilocybin mushrooms and without, but also with them in nature um, and being away from the television, away from the phone. I had no idea what was going on in the world. I didn't care. And just being with myself and my spirit and and remembering remembering who I am and reconnecting with my my lineage, my ancestors and my soul and my spirit because they all live in us. And when I returned to civilization or people, <laughs> I, um, I immediately started to, you know, have all these feelings and emotions and energy. And I said, OK, I, I'm going I need to create because as creators, as you know, as artists, that's how we get out a lot of our energy, mm-hmm. and where we put a lot of our energy. So really, all this music just started flowing out of me um, and I just trusted it. I decided especially my creative process now is is to trust whatever comes like i don't um i don't say oh no this sounds too much like this or oh i've done this before i i I don't stop myself anymore and i just let it if it's this simple idea then i trust the simple idea and i develop it 
and I'll write it. I'll think about it. Uh, sometimes I can have a song in my head for years, the idea of a song before I will commit to it on paper mm-hmm. or, or finalize it. Um, and then I, you know, once I get through the process of the idea on paper, I start to experiment with how it sounds on the trumpet and how it sounds on the piano or how it sounds on the voice. Mm-hmm. And then I, then I put it into like a program like Ableton or things like that. And I start to play the other instruments. So the idea will be like the, the, the first idea that you go with will be like a concept, right? About, about something mm-hmm. or like a story. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Okay. And you exactly. will incorporate the trumpet first and then all the other instruments. Uh, sometimes, actually, uh, honestly, a lot of times the trumpet is last. Really? <laughs> yes, because it's so final like that. I think that's because I've played that instrument the longest and mm-hmm. it's so personal and expressive for me that once the trumpet gets on it, then it becomes it, very much. About it's like the, the glue. It brings all together. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. It's the preacher man. So <laughs> I try to I try to set up the whole, you know, the whole the whole church first and then bring the trumpet in last. Oh, I love that. And I do a lot of, you know, a lot of production on the computer and all those types of things and everything. So it's it's really it's really a creative adventure or challenge to see what kind of world I can create uh before adding the trumpet. Nice, beautiful. Um, I want to touch a little bit on your collaborations. I know that you did two or three collaborations with J. Cole, and I heard a couple of them. Uh, tell me what it was like to collaborate collaborating with him. Sure, that that was a unique experience. Um, I had never seen an album made that way before. Um, you know, for me, I was I was brought in to simply just paint over what he had done. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, you know, we, we spoke beforehand when he reached out and I said, you know, I'm, I'm not somebody who can place specific things that you might hear. You have to let me do whatever my soul resonates with. And uh, he said, yes, that's what I want. I want you <laughs> to do, you know, the stuff that I hear you do. So that was very, that was very freeing for me because I, I, You know, I usually I, I am in a situation where they want something specific and I have to just recommend a trumpet player for them. Um, but with J. Cole, he really wanted me to just be myself. So it was it felt very inspirational and very free to just paint all over, you know, his album, which which it was it was it was great. Right, and it's awesome also to be able to collaborate with an artist that sees music as open as you right and that lets you do your art and it's not telling you well this way that way he just like trust that right you're the man yeah, for was, the job was, mm-hmm. exactly it was wonderful that he allowed that because if he didn't i wouldn't have been able to do it <laughs> <laughs> great you know, <laughs> yes, yes part of part of being an artist especially a collaborative one is knowing what you what you're willing what you're what resonates with you and what doesn't. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to force what doesn't resonate. Yes. And I that's, that goes back to intention, right? Mm-hmm. Not because yeah. maybe it's an artist that, right, you heard about before or is, you know, whatever. Uh, it's really important to keep your artistry true to yourself. Yes. I'm, I'm very good at saying no. <laughs> You are good, good. G- give yes. me, give me a little, give me a little tip for that. <laughs> a, a tip for that? Um, well, you know, if somebody sends me their music and wants me to do something on it, I, I, I listen to it, and if I don't immediately feel like there's a place for me, then I, I say no. Um, and uh, some people keep trying <laughs> until, <laughs> until. Until I say yes, but the reason why I end up saying yes is because, okay, on something they send a song or something I hear, if I can't in, imagine myself on it and it doesn't feel good to imagine myself on it, then I don't do it. So it's a strictly I, you know, about I, the I, music. I've learned that. It's a st- it, it really is. You know, I'm sure there's a dollar amount that can change that. <laughs> It's very, it's very high. I hope it, so. <laughs> I, I really hope it never changes for you, Theo, because, you know. No, it, it doesn't have to. <laughs> it doesn't, it doesn't. So traveling as a jazz musician, I know you've been in a lot of places, and I read 
that you have played salsa before with a salsa band. You have played many, many different styles of music. How was mm -hmm. it? What was the experience playing with a salsa band? I'm Colombian. I love I salsa. The... <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's... It's... Okay, so it, it, it actually was um, a group of Colombian musicians. Oh, really? Actually. So, um, you know, learning learning the rhythms of salsa was very difficult for me because they're almost i don't want to say they're opposite of jazz mm -hmm. because they're they're similar but they're kind of like inverted mm -hmm. like if this was salsa then this would be jazz or or whichever one you want to put mm -hmm. on top or like this so so the way you see the note on the paper or count it it, it looks the same but it's they just do it differently So I had to just learn how, you know, that, you know, that this means a certain thing when I see it on paper. So a lot of times when we would perform, yeah. I would, my note would come out a little bit late or a little bit early from everybody else. It would, you know, da -da, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so it, took me, it took me, it really took me a lot of, you know, I had to listen to the music a lot because it was like a cover band. Mm -hmm. You know, they played the, the Mark Anthony stuff and mm -hmm. the Gloria Estefan things. And some of that's like Gloria Estefan's Mi Tierra. I, I grew up listening Mi to Mi Tierra, I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so like that album, I, I knew that music. I could play that without the music. But I, uh, it took me many years to kind of hone in those skills. And, um, you know, it was just a lot of. It was very, very humble because I, I would play it wrong and they would all look at me and be like, oh, close, you almost got it. And <laughs> But they they had a lot of respect for me as like a master improviser. Mm -hmm. So it was very humbling to get in a situation where that didn't matter, where it was really just like, okay, what matters is me playing this music correctly, rhythmically, and culturally. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's something my grandfather actually did super well. Mm -hmm. He was in... He is Mr. Trumpet Man on the song by R Ricardo Ray. So and cool. he was in Predis Prado's band, um, you know, Tequila. Uh -huh. And so when he, he had a whole stint of his career where he was playing the, the high note trumpet part, mm -hmm. the lead trumpet part, and a, a lot of the Latin big machito mm -hmm. and things like that. So I was trying to really connect with that part of my DNA <laughs> and get those rhythms down. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, so... And, and also... It's also fun to play for dancers, man. It's a lot of fun to play for. I imagine, especially mm -hmm. salsa. People go full out. They go full they out. Go and, full and, out. And the harder and higher the notes you play, the more they dance. And so, <laughs> you know, I had, I had to learn a lot about the dancing so that I could understand the rhythm. Beautiful. I love that. Okay, so, you know, I was, I was reading about your album yesterday. And I was listening to it. And I know that there are a few uh, features in the album. Um, mm -hmm. Can you please tell me about how those came about? And I cannot ask you which one is your favorite, but tell me a story about one of the features, if you can, or something that you can remember from the album. Sure. Mm -hmm. Well, I think one of my favorite features is the song State of the Union 444 mm -hmm. um, that features Wyclef Jean. Mm -hmm. And we were hanging out and I was playing him the record. The record was actually finished mm -hmm. and he heard one of the songs and he was like, I love this. Let me, you know, let me know if you want me to, to rap on this. Mm -hmm. And, and I was like, uh, man, I, I would love to, but that's, that's finished. Um, but I want you, you know, I'm honored that you want to be on the, be in on the music. Mm -hmm. So what I did, I said, give me, give me a few days. And I took, the stems you know the finished stems mm -hmm. and we i connected with a, another producer who works a lot with hip-hop mm -hmm. and we um we sampled the song and created a new song mm -hmm. that that became kind of like the introduction to that song mm -hmm. and then we sent that to white club and he loved it and he wrapped this amazing 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 lyricism over it and rhythm to it So like that was a really cool experience because it, it challenged me to take a project that was already finished and expand it even more, like make space for for a legend, which of course that I can't I can't say no to. <laughs> um, and it, it was so cool because Wycliffe, you know, is somebody who I I've been listening to since I was 12 years mm -hmm. old, 13 years old. So to have to have his voice connect with my music is just 
it, every time I hear it, I'm like, I can't believe this is real. That's so. <laughs> I, when I listened to the song, I listened to the whole album the whole day yesterday, and I was, you know, just doing my oh, wow. life, and I, I was like, oh, I love, and this is exactly the type of music I've been listening to lately. So I was like, wow, the universe is just like, you know, healing me through music. I love it. Sending it to yeah, you. yeah, yeah. So send it to me. Well, we got, we, we might have to collaborate on some music. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> what an honor you are. Such a talented person. That will be an incredible honor for me. I want to talk a little bit about astral travel. I was reading about okay. that and I have no idea. I, I don't know any about anything about it. So tell me a little bit about it. Okay. Oh, that's deep. Okay. Well, <laughs> astral, astral traveling, astral traveling is when your when your soul uh, leaves your body mm -hmm. and your body remains in one place, but your soul travels. Mm -hmm. So um, it's not meditation. It's a little different. Mm -hmm. um, it's just more, you know, because the, the, the world exists on multiple dimensions, mm -hmm. you know, so like the, the dimension we're in right now is what they call the third dimension. It's the dimension of physical matter. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, light and sound travel through all dimensions and your soul is capable of leaving the body in a very healthy way and um, traveling anywhere in the world or universe that you're able to conceive and focus on. So that's, <laughs> that's like the short introduction to astral travel, but it's a good way to heal your body. You can heal your body when you, when you're outside of it. Um, you can heal your spirit. Um, you can communicate with your ancestors or other people that astral travel. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a very, it's a very, um, it's a very spiritual way to uh, address yourself. Mm -hmm. Wow, so interesting! I definitely want to learn more about it. And and actually, I found out about it because I was really reading your your website, and I saw how it played a big part in the making of this album. So that's why I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. um, what, how, how did that came about? How astral travel inspired you into making this album well i you know during the pandemic i was in florida and i was at my my family's home uh they weren't there but i was there uh, i actually went there and um i hadn't been there before the before the pandemic i had not been on tour for almost 15 years mm -hmm. so there's never a point where i was someplace for more than a wow. few days before i had to go someplace else and come back and you know i rented apartments I, I mean i live in la now and i'm never there and, <laughs> and, uh, um you know i had apartments that were just storage spaces wow. really. mm -hmm. and um so you know the astral travel i was i was spending a lot of time taking psilocybin or what they like to call psychedelic mushrooms as as for therapeutic reasons um and just really sitting sitting in the center of this house that i grew up in um that i know there's a lot of ancestral spirits in and just meditating or sitting still and and allowing the 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 energy from the mushrooms to connect me to to more powerful things mm -hmm and allowing it to help me heal myself and free myself emotionally, um, to cry a lot and to laugh a mm -hmm. lot. Um, and uh, so I would I would go in and out of these astral travels in which I would literally seek out my ancestors to communicate with them, to get guidance and to get uh, knowledge and understanding and to get healing. I think the biggest thing I learned from those weeks of doing that was... Um, was um, that I am enough as a human being mm -hmm. and that I am a complete human being and that, you know, if I were to to transcend or die today, that that it is OK and, and I should be at peace with with all the things I have done or wow. whether they are good or bad. And that, you know, love and light is the is the only way and true way. And all the other things that we do don't you know, don't carry as much weight as when we live with love and love. I need to record that and just play every day in the morning. 
<laughs> you know, to just set up, set the tone of the day. You know, I love that. That's beautiful. You can, you can reach out anytime, and I, I will, I will encourage. <laughs> thank you. you, thank you. That's that's beautiful. I love that. So, so what is the message with your album? I was I was listening to yesterday, and you know, after experiencing all of this in your childhood home. Um, what is the message with this album? A lot of it is instrumental. There are few features, um, mm -hmm. but it can be interpreted in a lot of different ways for the listener. What What do you? Well, what was your intention with this specific piece of of work? You know, it's good that you mentioned it. It can be interpreted a lot of different ways. Excuse me, and it's it's meant to be. You know, it's meant for you to take it and apply it to your life and your experience and to use for your healing. It's very healing music. It's super high vibrational. It's made with a lot of intent and focus and care and energy. So by listening to it, you know, it's the kind of album that you can, you can listen to and, and dance. You can listen to and sing along, but you can also turn off the lights, lay on the floor in a very comfortable position position, light some candles and put it on and just listen and let the vibrations kind of go through your body. Um, it's literally scientifically, mathematically designed to do that. <laughs> so there was a lot of, you know, a lot of understanding put into that. And, um, you know, the way the album is set up and the way it's written is that it's telling a story about, it's telling a story about um, the he a hero. Like in a movie, it's like a movie, very cinematic. And it's telling the story of a hero realizing that he has to become his own hero in order to not only save himself, but to just to do his part. In mm -hmm. So that's really, you know, the future past, the hero's journey, um, the hero's stomp. This is what the album personally was about. It was me telling my story of becoming the hero, my own hero of my own story and not having somebody else be my wow wow <laughs> wow wow thank you for thank you for sharing thank you for sharing you're, that. you're very welcome <laughs> Lupe. cool well thank you so much for sharing this time with me and sharing you know all this knowledge and wisdom i so appreciate it and i learned so much from you today <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm I'm just I'm just passing on the knowledge that belongs to all of us. I, I don't claim to be the originator of any of it. Well, thank you for for passing <laughs> so, on the the message. Thank you for your time, and look forward to creating with you. Yes. One day. Thank you for having oh, me on your show. Oh, thank you. Me too. Make sure to subscribe, leave me a review, start rating, and share with your friends on social media using the hashtag Lupe Fuentes Experience. I see you next time.